What is up y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to do some DIY brake cooling for under $50 for your track car or heavily used street car. Let's get right into that video. Woohoo! All right, so this is part two to the uh, track prep for the Integra here. And uh, yeah, we're doing some brake cooling today. Uh, I bought one of these uh, 36 inch sticks of tubing off Amazon. I'll put the link uh, in the description below. I bought two of them, uh, it's $23.99 a piece for a 36 inch stick. And this is inch and a half. Uh, I really couldn't fit two inch with what we're doing. Um, your application, you might be able to get away with two or maybe even four inch. But in this case, in the DA Integra, we're going with inch and a half and it should be plenty. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. I already have one side routed and we're gonna pretty much do the same thing on the other and we're gonna do a little test and see if she works. All right, so I cut it to length and I zip tied it in location here, right at the very front of the car. Uh, I don't really have a way to get it routed through the hole in the lip and it's, it's really tight in there too. I'd have to really knock it down even smaller, but basically I zip tied it into the front there, put a little black tape around it just to keep the, this orange stuff kind of likes to peel back a little bit and this stuff frays out. So I cut it and then just wrap some tape around it, that sort of thing. Um, and then what I did was, so I routed it down, comes through, goes on my traction bar, and then it angles just like that. And what I did here was, Suck, tape a little piece of paper on here so we could see if it's actually working. I'm gonna stick a uh, blow a leaf blower at the front of the car and we're gonna see if those things move and how much. So we'll, uh, we'll check that out, see what we got and then we'll put, uh, put this other stick in. I'm gonna have to do it a little bit routed different on the other side. Um, I don't know if I showed it in the last video but I had to cut a hole here for our transponder that we're getting. So yeah, that's where it's gonna be mounted up through there and our transponder will be able to read, read down through the track into, uh, or down through the splitter into the, the track itself. So yeah, um, let's uh, do a little testing and see if, uh, if that does a little bit of movement there. So we got our DeWalt blower here. Took the tip off that necks it way down so it's more of an open tip. And I'm just gonna kind of hold it a little ways back from the front here, maybe like a foot or two. Um, and then, I don't know, I'm thinking it's gonna work pretty well. It was a little hard for me to try to hold the camera and use the leaf floor in the front of the car at the same time. But uh, I held it, I would say, probably about this far back when I was blowing it. I mean, if I stuck it right up on there, it'd probably really going crazy, but yeah, 70, 80, 100 miles an hour. It's gonna get some nice flow uh, on the brakes. I'm gonna show you one thing that you wanna make sure you do too, and if you don't do this, you run the risk of cracking a rotor, so check this out. So you wanna try and have it pointing as much at the center of the rotor and not like out here. If you do it at the, out, like out in this outer part, you run the risk of cooling just this area and not from the inside out. And that'll cause uneven heat distribution. And I've heard of people cracking rotors, that sort of thing by running them that way. So by pointing it as much at the center of the rotor as possible in kind of by the caliper area um, where the axle is. If you, if you don't have a front wheel drive, this would be really easy. You could point this tube like basically right where the, the wheel bearing is and you'd, you'd be good. But in this case, we have uh, an axle to watch out for but we do have plenty of room there. Um, I haven't turned the wheel yet, but I'm, I'm sure we got plenty of, plenty of room in between there. Um, if we don't, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll probably still turn it just so you guys can see how much clearance we got. So now I'm gonna work on fishing this one down in through that hole right there and down along the traction bar. Shouldn't be uh, too bad, it should be just like the other side. Piece of cake. All right, so I ended up drilling a little hole right here. That way I got something to zip tie this to up in the corner. And then I'm just gonna throw some more down below on my way through. All right, so we have that all routed up in there, looking good. And I did test it. Whew, she had some real nice flow on there. So pretty stoked on that. We're gonna lower her down. Actually, you know what, what I might do? 
I'm gonna turn the wheels, crank them both ways, and we'll see what we got for, uh, for clearance there first. Wanted to uh, show you guys what it looked like in the engine bay too here. So you can see it going that way and down there like that. And honestly, it's not super noticeable in here unless you really get down and look, but yeah, they're uh, pretty well hidden. So it doesn't look real bad. Honestly, if you have like a fog light spot that you don't care about or like if you can make some sort of like plastic or 3D print a little duct work for it, you know, in there to mount, that would be honestly the, the cleanest looking and probably would work a little bit better. But um, I honestly don't have any issue with how this fits or looks. And the nice thing about it is if it gets fucked up, I can literally just cut the zip ties, spend another 50 bucks, or if only one side breaks, 20 24 dollars and get you know replace one side in a half hour or less so yeah not a big deal cheap easy and we're going to turn it and see what we got for clearance inside the wheel well that sort of thing so we are fully locked in and we've got i don't know probably a half inch gap between the caliper and the um, tube and we got a nice gap here between it and the wheel as well so yeah we should have uh no problems with with clearance on that and like i said if it rubs a hole through and starts getting crappy we literally just put a new piece in and it doesn't take much at all so now we know it works hell yeah one more quick look at how i routed it oh yeah that'll work real real nice I think I'm pretty happy with how uh, how those brake tucks turned out. Um, I'm glad you guys stuck around for part two. Um, <clears throat> I'm probably gonna do a part three yet also, because I still have to do uh, brake pads and whatnot. Uh, those were doing the Hawk DTC 60 pads. Oh yeah, switching from the Hawk HP Pluses. So that's gonna be probably a pretty big upgrade. Um, I don't know, stopping power will probably be pretty similar but I'm thinking the heat resistance is where we're gonna really, really notice it on track. So yeah, um, thank you guys for sticking around. Um, we're going racing here probably less than a month. So we got that uh, race school coming. Very, very excited. Um, yeah, if you guys could please like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and we will see you on the next one. Woohoo!